week has flown by and I have done very little reading. I had a fairly stressful week at work, but mostly I was just so tired because I caught like a mild cold and I didn't really do much reading. I also, I think I told you in my last video that I started reading Shadow of Glass right here and it's a, an 11 hour audiobook <clears throat> and I can't listen to it faster than like 1.2, 1.3 because it's fairly dense. So the storyline of Shadow of Glass, I'll just introduce it, is the story of a young woman who was taken in by a very wealthy family at a young age and raised as one of their own up until she was probably like 11 or 12. And then <clears throat> the mother of the house dies and she was the one who really took her in and wanted her treated as one of the family. And after her mother dies, her legal guardian, the husband, ends up treating her as a servant and making her become a servant of the household. And classic Cinderella story, she is mistreated and works her life away as a servant in this household. The story is set up as her legal guardian, the head of this household, is a lecherous pig and has a reputation for impregnating his maids and then f sacking them. And then they end up on the streets, penniless, with no support, with children. And most of them end up in the poorhouse, right? So she ends up in this desperate situation where his advances are starting to turn towards her. And somehow she summons her, like, fairy godmother, but her very godmother is actually a demon who is granting her nine wishes in exchange for her soul. So she takes the bait, and the story goes from there. <clears throat> it's a very, very similar to... It is kind of a Cinderella, like a loose Cinderella retelling. It reminds me, honestly, more of Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, with the main character who is taken in by relatives and then is never quite treated as family. And <clears throat> then she ends up falling in love with the brother, like the son of the house. And this is what's happening in this story. So honestly, it has potential. It had potential. The story was good. The writing is really, really, really well done as far as portraying the time period. It's very like period film, Bridgerton, Jane Austen type feel, right? Not Bridgerton. Don't compare it to Bridgerton. It's very Jane Austen type feel. But, you know, five hours into the audiobook, it's mostly just about her hemming and hawing about what she could possibly use her wishes for, what she could possibly use her wishes for, but then she never actually uses her wishes. Although plot twist, when she uses her wishes, someone dies. So eventually she stops, she tries to like get through her life without using them. This is a very long convoluted explanation for this story because it is a long convoluted story. <laughs> and honestly, I have been really really struggling my way through this book. I'm still reading it because part of it is intriguing and I really want to know what happens at the end. I would like to know how her life turns out, what happens with these wishes, if she loses her soul in the end. Like, I'd really like to know these things, but the story is just dragging on and on and on. And I feel like the pacing is definitely off in this and it's really throwing me off. Plus being busy plus being sick. So um, I have like two and a half hours left of the audiobook. I'm going to try and bump up the speed a little bit, finish it tonight so I can move on this weekend with, I think I'm going to start Sabriel next, honestly. It's on my tarot TBR. It's not one of my books on my magical readathon TBR, but I'm definitely feeling like my hermit comfy read this weekend. This is also Easter weekend. I have a lot of plans with family and friends, so we'll see how much reading I actually get done. My goal is to muscle my way through Shadow and Glass, get that off of my list. <laughs> I'm anticipating probably a three star. I would give it a two star if I DNF'd it, but I'm not going to DNF it. I'm going to finish it because there's enough of an intrigue there to keep me going. Also, like the characters aren't super annoying. They make sense. Their motivations make sense. The complexity of the world that she's created is really good. It's a very realistic portrayal of 
19th century London and England and the realities of women living during that time and the the social economic classes and the relationships between women and the relationships between men and all of the things. It's very Dickens-like as well. I remember having that thought while I was reading it because it's very like heavy commentary on social life in that time and Dickens is known for that as well. Honestly, if you enjoy classic literature, like I'm generally a fan of classic literature, I think that you should give this book a try because it's definitely worth reading, I feel like. Although I'll reserve my judgment on that until I finish it. We'll see how the ending goes. I think I'm just struggling with it because I don't really have the patience for a long read like that. Something that is a slow build, something that is very written with very flowery language, something that is set in, you know, a classic time period. I think because I've been so busy and sick and all those things added together to make this book a struggle for the moment. But I will reserve reserve my final judgment until I have finished the book. <laughs> but having said that, I'm going to go ahead and jump in, try and finish that book. I'll give you my update on how that went. And then this weekend, I'll be starting Sabriel. So welcome to the vlog. <laughs> Saturday afternoon, after one now, the day's flying by. I had brunch with my friend this morning, it was lovely, you'll have seen some clips from that. And now I'm at the laundry mat doing laundry. <laughs> I used an entire row of washers because it's been so long since I've done laundry. So I'll be here for a while. And I'm going to settle in and read Sabriel. But I did finish Shadow in the Glass last night. And I know I was saying I was kind of unsure about what I was thinking about it. But I ended up loving it. It was really good. The ending was amazing. It was very abrupt and left me going like, that's it? That's it? What just happened? And then it was really... I like couldn't stop thinking about it for the rest of the night. I was definitely like going over everything about the story and rethinking about everything and, you know, getting frustrated all over again with the characters and all of those things. And I feel like that's a sign of a really good book when it really makes you think about it really deeply and when you can't get it out of your head. So that is going to be a solid four star. I think the only thing that kept me from giving it a five star was the pacing. It definitely... Um, could use a little bit of a speed up in some places, but overall, really, really good. Um, I stick by what I said before. It's like a combination of Mansfield Park and Charles Dickens and Cinderella, all wrapped in, all wrapped into one. And it's, it's really good. I really enjoyed it. So really glad that I stuck with it. I almost DNF'd it. <laughs> I'm so glad that I didn't because it was really, really good. So I encourage you guys to pick it up if you're interested. And now I'm going to dive into Sabriel. I talked about what it was in my TBR, but I will talk about it again here. Sabriel is, let me grab it. Sabriel is a kind of like necromancy story. It is about a young girl whose father is what is called the Aborsen, and the Aborsen is tasked with moving the dead into the next realm, I believe, from what I remember. I've read it multiple times, like more times than I even know that I've read it, but all of the times I read it, I was a child, so probably like less than 14. So all of my memories are kind of vague. So it's almost going to be like reading it again for the first time, which I'm super excited about. But I do remember that she is, the task of Aborsen falls to her and she's been gifted the belt with the bells and each bell has a different power and she has to learn how to use them. And I remember 
being completely captivated by the story. So I'm hoping that I love it as much as I did when I was as much as I did when I was a kid. And I'm just going to dive into it. I'm going to be here for a few hours, probably at least doing laundry. So I should be able to make some pretty good headway on it. So let's get to it. When time's been bad, you put smiles on everyone. I think of you and of all I should have done. beginning is just as good as I remembered there are some details that I forgot the beginning I think I read so many times that the specifics of it are pretty close to what I remember but I'm looking forward to getting to the middle because I think I really remember the end and I really remember the beginning but I don't really remember what happened in between <laughs> so I'm excited for that I uh, got ran out of the laundromat and back into my car because um, it's getting really busy in there and there was one um, person who came in and started talking to me and wouldn't leave me alone and was making like sexually suggestive comments so I'm like yep I'm out of here see ya so I'm hiding in my car <laughs> and waiting for my laundry here and reading in peace It is Tuesday and it's my lunch break and I wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, the last thing that you guys saw I think was my Easter and it was lovely and yesterday I went home and read about a hundred pages of Sabriel and I am in love with this story all over again and I'm so happy that I'm rereading it because I didn't realize how much of this I had forgotten. There was a lot of details in this that I just don't remember so it really is like watching and like reading <laughs> this book all over again so I am loving 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 this I'm hoping to have finished this by the end of tomorrow hopefully this is a very busy week I have an interview tonight after work so I am really excited about that I really hope that they hire me again and that I can be the fourth grade teacher for a while here so wish me luck <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an update. This book is so good so far. Um, I don't think I've really explained what this is about very well. So essentially, Sabriel is the daughter of the Aborsum, which I did say before. And he is a necromancer, but he's not the kind of necromancer that brings the dead back to life. His work is to make sure the dead stay dead and they don't come back to life and they don't haunt or harm the living. And there is a lot of that in this world. There is a lot of danger from the dead and creatures of the dead that can harm the people who live in this world. So one year close to Sabriel's 18th birthday, she receives a message from her father and realizes that he is either stuck in death or actually dead. So she leaves the school that she's in and crosses the wall into the wild territory of the north to try and find out what happened to her father. And things are definitely bad news. There has been sacrifices in order to bring what they call the greater dead back from the dead and she's finding a lot of dead bodies and she's already been attacked several times so it's a very dangerous mission that she is on and I cannot wait to keep reading this. I 
remember what happens in the end, <laughs> but I don't remember what, how they got there, so I'm super excited. I finished my interview. I think my cheeks are still a little warm and red. I get so... Not embarrassed, but just nervous. I was a lot more nervous than I thought I was going to be. So, I could feel my cheeks getting really warm. But, I feel like it went really well. And I don't think I came across as super nervous. So, that's good. Uh, so, now I can just go home and spend the rest of the night reading. Which is exactly what I plan to do. Cornelia, you'll be all I'm friends it's been a little while since I updated this vlog I wanted to let you know that I did finish Sabriel and I loved it unfortunately I didn't love it as intensely as I did when I was younger and I was pretty surprised by how much I had actually forgotten about the story and the details that I didn't remember it was all very foggy <laughs> I mostly remember loving it and I remember my favorite character being the demon cat <laughs> that was in the story and he's still my favorite character so that was good but I I gave it five stars again just because of the personal connection that I have to that story and how much I love it no matter what but I think if I was being very honest and only thinking about the quality of the story I would have probably given it a four star which is still good <laughs> so personally for me it's a five star but if I'm being very honest about the rating of the actual story and the writing and all of that I would say four stars so yeah I am gonna go ahead and wrap up this vlog actually because it's been a few days and I, there's been a vlog in between this one already and I'm starting a new one today. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this vlog, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content and I will see you in the next one. Bye!